We had one more torpedo loaded in our rear tube on board. But despite that I made a decision to return home to port. Realistically, there really wasn't much that we could achieve with only one torpedo. Returning to port, especially when it's not that far away, is therefore much better than staying out here for who knows how many days, on the off chance that we meet another ship. There was another important decision that I had to make. Christmas was only a few days away, and the men were practically begging me to sail home at high speed. Sailing at high speed would reduce our travel time by one whole day, but it would put a lot of strain on the engines and consume a huge amount of fuel. I was sure that some bean counters at the headquarters would complain because of this, but I think our patrol was successful enough that we could ignore their yapping. One whole day usually isn't a lot, but if we were to sail at high speed, we would arrive back in Lorient on the morning of the 21st. If we really put our backs into it, I'm sure that we can have the boat cleared out within 24 hours and the men would be able to board trains home on the 22nd. Traveling home by train should take two or three days, which would mean that they should make it home just in time for Christmas. I can't deny them that. Not after all the things that they have gone through and all the hardships that they have taken upon themselves. The boat is sailing home at full speed, despite the horrible, horrible weather that keeps tossing us around. By this point my cold had become much, much worse and I didn't have any other choice but to monitor the progress of our boat and the workings of the crew from the warmth of my bed, where I lay shivering and trembling. Thankfully, after so many patrols together, I now had a very reliable crew that I could 100% trust to bring us home safely. This did give me some peace as I slipped away into uneasy dreams induced by the heavy medication that the doctor prescribed. After an absolutely hellish ride that had caused more than just a few bruises, we had finally arrived back at Lorient. The men on board were ecstatic when the watch crew finally reported that the lighthouse on the Ile de Croix was in sight. We had made it back to port without further delays, and most likely everyone would be able to get home before Christmas. Little kids on Christmas morning couldn't have been happier than these men at this moment. A happiness that found a very sudden end when the watch crew reported the twin-engined aircraft on the horizon. Thankfully it didn't pay any attention to us, but continued towards the northwest. We soon realized that something was very wrong, when no minesweeper was forthcoming to escort us into the port. Instead we received a radio message to sail into the port on our own. As we came into the port we were greeted by a panorama of destruction. The Royal Air Force had decided to deliver some early Christmas presents of their own. There wouldn't be a nice welcoming committee waiting for us this time. I'm sure that instead of that we would be assisting in rescue and recovery operations. This is not how I wanted this patrol to end. Hello there, and welcome to a new episode of our U55 campaign in Silent Hunter 3 with the One Alex Edition mod. Now, today's episode is not what you're used to. It is significantly shorter, and we won't be blowing up any ships. Somebody else has already taken care of that for us, to some degree. We'll go into detail about what has happened here in a moment. First of all, let me explain why today's episode is a bit shorter. Um, me being ill, that was not just a part of the story. That was actually happening. I had a quite terrible cold with some mild pneumonia sprinkled on top of it. But I'm feeling better now and I can once again record videos. Something which I wasn't able to do because my voice was just completely gone. Now. That's why this episode has also been delayed. On our way back from our patrol area we didn't encounter anything, it was pretty much smooth sailing apart from the storm. When we approached Lorient we very briefly spotted a plane far away in the clouds and once I arrived in the port 
I noticed that apparently we had just missed an enemy air raid on Lorient. So it looks like some enemy bombers came in, smashed the town and the harbor to bits and flew out again just before we arrived. And I'm actually glad for that, because in that terrible weather out there I would not have been able to defend myself. I wouldn't have been able to man the flag guns and, well, I wouldn't have been able to dive either because the waters are too shallow for that. So I'm pretty thankful that we only arrived after the raid was finished. Even though it would have been really cool to see it, but I'm afraid that uh, we will get a chance for that at some other point. It's only gonna get worse from here on out. This patrol is ending, and the next patrol will already see us in... Well, at the start of this new year that is approaching. And from this point it really does only get worse and hard. So we'll see how we can cope with that. For now I want to take this opportunity to answer a few questions, which I do get a lot, before we will dock the boat over there at the pier. There are the people waiting for us, this is where we want to go. Okay. A question that is quite frequently asked is um, how do you get the crew on deck? And I will answer that in a moment. Let me just really quick turn my man. Oh no, 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 no. Wrong button. Don't. Yeah, surface the boat. We can't dive here, it's too shallow. Okay, everything's fine, nothing happened. Damn, who put those two buttons next to each other? Um, let's slow down the boat. This antenna is now attracted, that's fine. But I do want to have you up on the bridge. Yeah, we are slowing down and I am having some graphical issues when I look that way which can actually lead to the game crashing so I have to be a bit careful with that Let us slow down further and I'll prepare to take manual control of the boat Actually, let's do that right now I need to come a bit more to the left Okay. Increase. Okay, turn half now. Yeah, the graphical issues. Weird. When that happens, look away for a moment. And it's okay again. But it can crash the game. I have discovered, which is not good. I don't know why it happens, I just have to bear with it. Okay, turn left a bit. And actually turn us right towards that place. Also slow down the build now. Now, one of the questions that gets answered a lot, uh, asked a lot is how do you get the crew on deck? Well, if you are new to this, I highly suggest that you press F1 to bring up a list of the controls. You have navigation, station and other controls. And in the other controls you will find an entry for raising or lowering the crew on the deck, which is Shift D or Control D. So if I press Shift D, there they are. And there you will also find an entry for raising the pennants, the victory pennants. If you want to do that, there are some things that you need to pay attention to. First of all, pay attention to your crew. Notice that now that we are close to the dock, they have lowered their binoculars. They are no longer watching. And I do have to slow down the boat. Might still be too fast. We'll see. Now that they don't have their binoculars on their eyes anymore, you can raise the victory pens. What I usually do is I raise uh, both the periscopes. There's one.
Der ist Java. The graphics are now doing some weird stuff. Jeez. That's new. Oh man, I very often really wish that this game wasn't so old and so... Despite all the work, the amazing work that the modders have done over the decades, still so riddled with bugs. But yeah, now we have the periscope masts raised. Oops, there come the graphical issues again. I have the periscope mast raised, and now I press Shift K, and now it should bring up the pennants. Which is this? There we go. There they are. And that's how you get the pennants. You have to be so close to the dock that the crew lowers their binoculars before you can do it. You might ask, how do you change the pennants? Well, the pennants are part of a mod that is included in the mod compilation. And unfortunately, the documentation for that mod is not included. You have to edit game files to select which pennants you want to have displayed. And that is a bit more involved to explain than just, well, raising them. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can easily, seriously break something. That's why I'm hesitating to show it in a video. I hope you understand, but I just know that if I do show it, many people will break their game and I will get a lot of questions why X and Y doesn't work anymore. So I'm trying to avoid that. If you do want to find out how it works, um, look for the Penance mod and look for its documentation. Now that we have that all settled, let's actually go ahead and dock the build. We exit the patrol and we dock at Lorient. And let's go through the results of this patrol together. This was patrol number 12 according to the game, but according to my counting it is really patrol number 11, because patrol number 1 was just a shakedown patrol still in peacetime. That was not a war patrol, the first one. So this, is, this was the 11th war, war patrol. We were at sea for almost a whole month, and we sunk 6 merchants with a total tonnage of 33,930 tons. We also sunk one, one warship, that was the auxiliary cruiser, for 13,850 13, tons, excuse me. Yeah, the auxiliary cruiser. Our boat was intact when we arrived back in port, and we gained quite a bit of renown for this patrol. Some of the crew earned promotions and medals. We will take a look at that in a moment. Let's go to the captain's log. Here we can once again see the results. So we have sunk on the 7th of December a medium tanker, then on the 9th of December a large freighter, 10th of December a T1 tanker and another T1 tanker, on the 16th, 16th of December we sunk a large troop transport, on the 19th of December a large steamer and the auxiliary cruiser. Good. Let's go to our office, take a quick look at the U-boat aces. So we are currently the top ace. With 218,902 tons under our belt, we are ahead of Kretschmer and Prien for now. Although I don't know if maybe they are currently at patrol and will come back into the harbor, at which point they will be in the lead again. But yeah, for now I'm in the lead. Nice. Is there anything else I want to do right now? I don't think so. Let's go to the cabinet here for the crew. And let's see who will receive a promotion, medals, and a qualification maybe. So promotions. Highlighted in blue are the crew members that are eligible for a promotion. The question now there is, who gets one? Emmo Unterhorst, he is a Leutnant. Max Wove, Leutnant. Well, 
their rank is already quite high for their position. So that's alright. But maybe I want to award... Yeah, Eckermann here. He has uh, been with us from the very start. And he is a very important part of the engine crew. So I think we are gonna award him a promotion. He is now Stabsbootsmann Eckermann. Then who else has made an impact this patrol? I think our medic, our doctor, Paul Volker, he has um, definitely taken good care of the crew doing all these patrols. He too has been with us from the start, so we are going to promote him as well. Stabsbootsmann Volker. And let's see. We could award a promotion to one of the regular crewmen, I think. Let's see who has really deserved it. Maybe somebody who works in the torpedo room. Thomsen here. He has also been with us from the start. He is a Matrosengefreiter. Let's promote him. Matrosenobergefreiter Thomsen, reporting for duty. So those were the promotions that we could award. Medals. There are a few medals available. We have a few Iron Crosses second class that can be awarded to someone and... I think I definitely... want to... You already have one, so I'm not gonna give you, giving you another one. But this member of the watch crew, Felbinger, you are getting an Iron Cross second class for your efforts. Good. Radio Man, he has been extremely valuable. Franz Huxel, he's also receiving an Iron Cross. We have one Iron Cross first class that we can award. That, I think, is going to one of our officers. Unterhorst, he already has an Iron Cross second class. So does Wove. I think Wove is more deserving of it, yeah. So you are getting an Iron Cross first class. A U-boat front clasp. The U-boat front clasp was awarded to um, members of U-boat crews. But, and here's the big but, it wasn't awarded at this point in the war. That's why I have not awarded this medal to anyone yet. Um, I think the U-boat front clasp came into existence in 43 or even just 44. I'm not 100% sure right now. But that is why I'm not awarding this medal. The U-boat war badge, on the other hand, that was awarded at this point. And it was awarded to every crew member who had completed his second war patrol. So, Nauman here, for example, he has completed his second patrol now. He's getting the medal. Sure, he has only completed one patrol so far. So even though the game would allow me to give him the badge, I'm not doing it. He'll get it next time. Uh, Abel? Yeah, he has received it. Falke no, doesn't get it. Pulst does get it. And Seiferlein also is not receiving it right now. And those were all. Everybody else should already have it. Yeah, because everybody else has been on more than two patrols. So. That's how I'm awarding medals. And now we can award one qualification to a crew member. Let me think, what do I actually need? What would be good to have? I do have two flag gunners. I feel that that is enough. I have... I could use another watchman. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I think... I have one gunner, I think that is enough for now. Two flag gunners, that is enough for now. Radio man, I have two. They um, are good at taking turns, so that's working fine right now. Helmsman. 
could award that qualification to someone in the control room. Machinists, I have two reliable machinists, that's fine. Torpedo man, I have three on board, I don't need another one. Medics, I only have one. But so far, I didn't even really need him. Repair, I have one of the officers who is a repairman. But uh, Unterhorst is also a repairman. He's also a machinist and a gunner. Hark is a helmsman. Wove is a helmsman, machinist, gunner. Has all those qualifications. I think I want another watchman. Another watchman from the pool of officers here. Or do I? Can I award the Watchman to one of the regular crew members? Let's see... Watchman qualification for Keller. Yeah, only to petty officers or officers. Okay. Do I want to make another officer a Watchman? So far, it really is enough to have one of my officers and really just a bunch of sailors on the bridge. That is usually enough. So I think what I will actually do is to award another radio man qualification. Because then I will have three guys with that qualification. Two can take turns on the radio and one can be brought in for the sonar. But because of the qualification he will get a bonus in this compartment. That could be useful. Who are we selecting? Hartmann. He has been a good hydrophone operator. So I'm giving him the qualification. And that's that. We have taken care of business. The next thing that we can do is to check which upgrades we might want to install on our U-boat before we head out for the next mission. First of all, how much renown do I have? I have 5,399 renown. That's a nice sum. How much is it for a Type 9B submarine? Seven and a half. I'm not sure if I want to go for a Type 9, but we are slowly getting to where I have the option to do that. Let me know in the comments if you think going for a Type 9 submarine would be a good idea. There are certain advantages, but also disadvantages to that submarine type. Do I want any other upgrades at this point? Conning tower, none available. They will become available later. Deck gun, we only have that one choice available. Later we will also have the option to completely uninstall the deck gun. Later on in the war when you don't really get a chance to um, conduct deck gun engagements anymore, it might actually be a good idea to remove the deck gun entirely, which will give you a little bit of underwater speed. We could install a double 2cm flag gun. I'm not doing it, and here's the reason why. The flag gun on the double mount was not in service at this point in the war. It came only much later. At this point in the war, the German submarines were, let's say, not as affected by air attacks as they would be later on. And they would later put in a lot of effort to upgrade their anti-aircraft armaments. But at this point in the war, they went with this single 20mm, which definitely wasn't a good idea. I will, before I head out, modify my torpedo loadout. Is there anything else we can do? Engine upgrades, nothing available right now. We already have the battery upgrade installed. We have the KDB hydrophone upgrade installed. And that's it. In specials, there are only the emblems. So we are not upgrading anything before we are heading out again. And that shall be it for today's video. Yeah, that shall be it for today's video. We ended the patrol together this time, taking a look at the crew after the patrol was completed. And next time, when we continue this amazing campaign, we are heading out into 1941 and fresh, terrible, dangerous 
absolutely insane challenges ahead of us. Of that, I'm 100% sure. It really is going to get a lot worse out there. The happy times are now over. But that's something for next time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed today's little episode, despite it being so short. And I do hope that you will tune in next time when we continue this amazing campaign. Until then, have some great days and goodbye.